God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and God has been dealing with me. And of course, when he's dealing with me, I'm going to share and I'm going to talk to you guys because I feel like this is very important information. But I was sitting there and just, you know, been dealing with this thing of contentment and stuff. And I'm just like, God, what is wrong with me? Lord, what is wrong with me? I seem to be never satisfied. I seem to find flaws with everything. I thought back over my life and I was really rebellious and really resistant to change, to structure, to holiness, to obedience, to God's word. Like there was this restraint there that just I want to try it my way. I, I'd rather have this and that and there. And it's like, okay, God, what are you trying to do? What is going on? Why aren't you listening to me? What about what I want? And then, of course, the big thing, you know, the envious thing when you're looking around and you're just like, everybody else seems to be so put together. I feel so silly and so stupid for having these struggles, these complaints, these problems. What is wrong? And then here go the big picture. And like I said, I say this all the time. And it's because that's what's on my heart. God, you put me in front of people on YouTube. I'm a pastor's wife. So it's like, I feel like I should get this by now. Or I feel like I should have mastered this by now. And obviously, you know, scripture let us know that there's nothing that has happened or does occur to us that Jesus could not have relate to or still can relate to. And I automatically thought about when Satan was tempting Jesus and the things he went for. Um, he tried to present his case three times, you know, try to get Jesus to turn away, to not do God's will, to be disobedient. And that's the root of it. Like Satan is trying to get us to disobey God, to dishonor him, to be disrespectful. And in this case, he started out with his needs, like what he actually needs. And we all have needs and God will supply our needs. But in this particular case, Jesus had been fasting for 40 days. So here comes Satan. So you can have some bread right there if you just turn those stones. So you can go ahead and eat. Jesus knew this obedience, this task is not done. It's not complete. It is still an ongoing process. So no, I would not turn those stones. I don't need bread alone. God supplies all my needs. God fulfills me. And that's a big thing for me. You may sit there and say, my kids just saying they, they aren't acting like Christian kids. They aren't doing right. My husband doesn't really love me. I'm not satisfied with my wife. Um, my job is not taking care of the bills. Um, my health isn't up to par. Um, I don't have people in my life that I can vent to or talk to, you know, if we think long and hard about it, we can have a really long list of things that we feel like aren't fulfilled that should be, because that's how we are. Like, if we know there's a possibility of this being filled or this being uh, concluded or relieved or satisfied, oh, okay, now that I know that there is an option and choice, let's go this way. i take it for example. Let's say you've been struggling really, really bad, right? Job ain't really paying too much, this and third. And you get offered um, some government assistance, right? And you say, okay, now I got some room, you know, to eat. I can just get some food and eat. I can feed me and my family. And I have the money that I didn't have to spend on food. Now I can, I can go trick myself. And that sounds good. Sounds really good, right? However, let's think about the scenario at first. If you had paid all your bills and you were struggling, you bought food and you were struggling, does it really sound like that's an excuse or a way out to step away from your responsibilities? Maybe this is the opportunity and chance God's giving you to save your money or to um, re-budget or to catch up on some things. So in case you fall back into another situation, you be better equipped and prepared because let's be real, government assistance and all that stuff is not meant to be permanent. It's a temporary thing, you know? So that's just an example. But, um, or just like when your marriage is at a third, let's say 
um, you and your wife, you know, you're together, you're young. And as you guys get older, um, maybe she gets health problems and she's not the same romantically, you know? And then it's like, this just doesn't satisfy me. Like I have this void. I have this gap. Um, I have needs. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a, you know, y'all know how y'all know how we do. And this ain't thing for women. I got needs. He's not meeting my needs. So I got to fulfill that. But it's a need, right? So that means God can supply you. He can sustain you because there, the only option isn't to just give you what you want, right? The other option is sacrifice. I still need to be holy. I still need to be righteous. I still need to be pleasing God, even if I fill these void and these gaps. And I need to fill it up with this. This is God's holy word with prayer and fasting and really, truly leaning on him. Let him satisfy you because as long as we live, we're going to be missing out on something. We're going to find something to miss. I do it all the time. I just went through my closet and on one end, I'm like, okay, God, I literally had to pluck out all my coats because I don't gain weight. And then on the other end, it's like, okay, I need a coat. I don't have a coat. It's getting cold. I need a coat, God. What in the world? You don't have money like that. God, help me. <laughs> we can do that often. We can look for reasons to feel holes and gaps and pieces in our lives that are just opportunity for us to get closer to God. I use the Bible thing, for example, because I can solely relate to that. Not solely, but primarily I'm in a season where I'm just like, God, just help me to be content with whatever pen, whatever highlight I find, whatever Bible I got. But as long as a new one is being plastered in front of you or someone's offering to send you something or um, you get extra money, there's always going to be that opportunity, that feeling of, oh, it looks like God presented an opportunity for me to buy another one. When in reality, that's not the case. If God wants you to be content, will he put you in a position to be discontent or to get so overwhelmed and have anxiety about options and choices, which is what I do, that I end up making poor decisions or dwelling on things I shouldn't for too long or the big thing, taking your eyes off Jesus. Y'all, Satan is so super duper clever. This is why the Bible tells us to resist him, not to square up with him, not to go toe to toe, not to stumble his head, but to resist him, stay away from him. How do we do that? Jesus made the perfect example. Satan came for his knee where he was lacking at the moment. Um... He came for grace and mercy. Like, okay, we God is a gracious guy. He's a good guy. He will these angels will come get you. You he ain't gonna let you get hurt, not you. No, we don't tempt God. That's like literally me getting in a car and doing 80 down the road and saying, I ain't worried about no police. I ain't getting no ticket. We don't do that. You have enough sense about yourself not to do that. Because whether you weren't about to take a ticket and worry about you, you had to go to court. So you pick. Um, or worst case scenario, you could actually hurt yourself with someone else. We do not take advantage of God's grace and mercy. And then the last thing was, um, okay, I'm going to go for the eyes. What do you see? All of this. Don't you want all of this? Don't you want part of this? All you got to do is do this. And that's how we do in everyday life. Like, man, if I could just do get to this, if I could just, I don't know, um, I'm not being fulfilled in my marriage. So if I could just get someone I could text, I would be okay. Or if I just get some little attention, maybe I can post a picture and get a couple of likes or something. You know how we are. And then, or how we should not be, excuse me. I don't want to say that's how we are, but how we should not be, but it happens especially when you're younger, you want that attention. You're married. You're supposed to be content with whatever attention your husband gives you. But we know how that goes, right? But in those cases, like, oh, if I could just, well, I just a little flirting, you know, to satisfy me, you know, maybe you're bored in your marriage and this, that, and third, but be content in the Lord. Do not give Satan any room to destroy you or your marriage or both. Be wise and be smart. Resist Satan. Don't take advantage of these opportunities that seem to be a good deal and a good idea. And I got to tell myself that all the time, y'all. When I go shopping, I just say, 
yeah, it is a good deal. But do I need it? Do I have to have it? I know y'all had the kids, so excuse me. Like I said, I'm in the middle of mommy mode, but didn't have no intentions to record this. But I really want to stretch home the idea and concepts regarding being content, um, staying within God, keeping your eyes on him, and wanting and having a desire to honor him, even when it hurts, even when it's scratching and pulling you, and you're a little uncomfortable for a little while, you know. Those those situations where it's just like, Ah, uh, you know, you fight, there's a war going on inside of you, right? And you're just, that's this tug of war. But which side of you are you feeding? Which side of you are you strengthening? Like, are you reading and praying? Are you really having a relationship with God? Or are you doing things for show, for likes? Like, this is a war zone here, you know? You're fighting for your life every single day. You're fighting for sanctification every single day. Yes. You can secure your salvation. God chose you. But that sanctification where you have to die daily and you have to beat about this flesh and get yourself right, this is an ongoing 24-365 process. And that means out of those days, how many days are you truly fighting? How many days are you preparing your weapon? How many days are you using your weapon? You have to be equipped, y'all. Are you resistant to God's will? Are you in at a job that doesn't really pay the bill, but God wants you to be there for a reason? Are you in a marriage where you're not being pleased? You're missing something. You feel like you're lacking something. Um, and let's be real. Most of those things are selfish anyway. Most of them, not all. But are you in a marriage where you, you're just not satisfied? Just not doing it for you no more? Did you forget who was supposed to honor and who's supposed to get the glory? Because it's definitely not us. Y'all think about that. And tell what y'all think. Y'all, please, 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 please. Pray for me. I'm praying for y'all. Stop fighting God's will. Stop fighting against God. He wants what's best for you. He knows what's best for you, no matter what it looks like out here, no matter what it sounds like. Remember, we're here temporarily. Love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.